On Saturday, November 5, 1983, at 4 a.m., a tragic incident took place in the Frigg gas field located in the Norwegian sector of the North Sea. Four, diverse, namely Edwin Arthur Coward, 35 years old, Roy P. Lucas, 38 years old, Bjorn Jaber Bergerson, 29 years old, and Trolls Helvig, 34 years old, were inside a diving chamber system on the deck of the rig. This chamber system was connected to a diving bell through a short passage called a trunk. Assisting the divers were two experienced dive tenders named William Cramond and Martin Saunders. Before the incident occurred, decompression chambers 1 and 2, along with a third chamber that was not in use at that time, were connected to the diving bell through the trunk. Cramond and Saunders operated a clamp to keep the trunk sealed. Coward and Lucas were resting in chamber 2 at a pressure of 9 atmospheres, while Bergerson and Helovic had just finished a dive and joined the trunk with the diving bell. The two divers left their wet equipment in the trunk and climbed through it to reach chamber 1. The standard procedure would have been as follows. Close the diving bell door, which was open to the trunk. Slightly increase the pressure in the diving bell to tightly seal the bell door. Close the door of chamber 1, which was also open to the trunk. Slowly depressurize the trunk until it reached a pressure of 1 atmosphere. Open the clamp to separate the diving bell from the chamber system. At this point, the first two steps had been completed when, for an unknown reason, Cramond opened the clamp that was keeping the trunk sealed before Diver 4, Helovic, could close the chamber door. As a result, the chamber underwent an explosive decompression from a pressure of 9 atmospheres to the 1 atmosphere present in the unsealed chamber system. The air rushed out of the chamber system with tremendous force, causing the interior trunk door to jam and pushing the bell away, striking the two tenders. Unfortunately, all four divers lost their lives in this tragic incident, and one of the tenders, Cramond, was killed, while Saunders sustained severe injuries. The remains of the four divers underwent thorough medical investigations, revealing significant findings. Notably, large quantities of fat were discovered in the major arteries, veins, and cardiac chambers, as well as within organs, particularly the liver. The autopsy findings indicated that the rapid formation of bubbles in the blood caused denaturation of the lipoprotein complexes, rendering the lipids insoluble. In the case of the three divers who remained inside the chambers, it was suggested that their blood instantly boiled due to the rapid decompression, resulting in the cessation of circulation. However, the fourth diver faced a more gruesome fate. Due to the force of the blast, he was dismembered and mutilated, being propelled through the partially blocked doorway. It can be surmised that he died instantaneously as a result of this violent expulsion. Forensic pathologists conducted an investigation and determined that Helovic, experiencing the highest pressure gradient and in the process of securing the inner door, was forcibly propelled through a crescent-shaped opening measuring 24 inches in length, which was created by the jammed interior trunk door. This expulsion caused his thoracoabdominal cavity to be bisected, resulting in the fragmentation of his body. Consequently, all internal organs from his chest and abdomen, except for the trachea and a section of the small intestine, were forcefully expelled. Some of these organs, along with the thoracic spine, were projected a considerable distance, with one section found vertically positioned, 30 feet, above the exterior pressure door. The committee assigned to investigate the accident determined that human error was the primary cause, specifically on the part of the dive tender who opened the clamp. The trunk door had a center hinge design resembling a butterfly valve disc, and it was rotated too far to the left, causing the rim of the interior hatch to become lodged in the door opening. This resulted in a crescent-shaped opening, similar to an ajar manhole cover that remained in place. The horizontal width of this opening was measured at 24 inches. It remains unclear whether the tender who opened the clamp did so under the instruction of a supervisor, of his own accord, or due to miscommunication. Communication between the tenders outside the chamber system was limited to a bullhorn attached to the wall, and with the high levels of noise from the rig and sea, it was challenging to accurately follow the ongoing events. Additionally, fatigue from long and demanding work hours took a toll on the divers, who often worked 16-hour shifts. 
Furthermore, this incident revealed engineering failures within the outdated Biford Dolphin diving system, which originated in 1975. The system lacked fail-safe hatches, outboard pressure gauges, and an interlocking mechanism that would have prevented the trunk from being opened while the system was pressurized. Prior to the accident, Norsk Veritas had issued a rule stating that connecting mechanisms between the bell and chambers should be designed in a way that they cannot be operated when the trunk is pressurized. This rule required fail-safe seals and interlocking mechanisms in such systems. Following the accident, Norsk Veritas and the Norwegian Oil Directorate made this rule mandatory for all bell systems.